They say everyone of a certain age can remember where they were when President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Well, the Beatles were here. The Globe in Stockton on Tees, North East England, was a popular venue in the 1960s. I'd just been to a business networking event and some of us were shown round at the end of it. For many years, it was a bingo hall and then derelict, but it reopened in 2021 after a £28 million redevelopment. And if you go into the bar next door, you see these wonderful pictures by Ian Wright, who at the time was a young man working for the Northern Echo local newspaper. So the 22nd of November 1963 was the day that JFK was killed in Dallas. And that night in the UK, the Beatles were doing two shows. This was the day that their second album with the Beatles had been released. And the Beatles heard about the shooting by a word of mouth before they went on stage. As one of the support acts, the Vernon girls were making their way to the stage. John Lennon said to one of them, have you heard John Kennedy's been shot? Now, here in the Globe bar, there are portrait pictures that Ian Wright took during the interval. And as he was taking these pictures, the Beatles learned that Kennedy was dead. I can't seem to differ on this point, but there may have been some discussion about whether to go ahead with the second performance that night. But let's be honest, the streets were thronged with Beatles fans. And they couldn't let them down, and so they went ahead. I don't know how true this is, but I've read that one reason for the Beatles' popularity in America when they went over in February of 1964 to appear on The Ed Sullivan Show was that the Americans were suffering from a psychological shock and they needed this kind of entertainment to give them a lift. Ian Wright, who actually lives in America now, wrote a book called Curtain Up, The Globe, 1935 to 1975. And in another corner of the bar, there are photographs that illustrate an incident in 1965 involving the Rolling Stones. In October of that year, the Stones were on their second British tour. And in the audience in Stockton, there was a gang of teddy boys. That was a British youth cult at the time, because they called teddy boys because they dressed in Edwardian-style clothing. There were about 20 of them. They didn't like the Stones at all. And Ian Wright's recollection is that there was a menacing atmosphere that night. What these guys had done was they'd filed down the edges of some coins so that they were razor sharp. And as soon as Mick Jagger came on stage, they started throwing them at him. One of them hit him just above the right eye. You know, a little bit lower could have blinded him. As he was singing, blood was dripping onto his clothes. And when the song finished, the management closed the curtains so he could go off to be attended to by the St. John Ambulance, the volunteer medics, they patched him up. He went back on the stage and the show continued. The next day, the Northern Echo ran a front page picture of Jagger with a headline by the legendary Harold Evans who'd go on to edit the Sunday Times and be a huge name in journalism. Blood from a Stone. I want to leave some links in the description if you want to find out more. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, until the next time, bye-bye.